Hi, Wenzel from Moonwitch here. It is Christmas and I want to talk a little bit about religion and science and art and family. I just had an awesome time, a great dinner with my family. My grandma actually moved to New York from Mexico. She's not from Mexico, but she just lived there the last 20 years, I think. <clears throat> and she sold her house, moved to New York. And we had dinner at her first... Well, we had first... We had dinner for the first time at her apartment. And... My aunt is a really spiritual woman. And me and her started talking about spirituality, meditation, um, and for some reason um, my cousin, which is a really smart girl, she's 18, she's gonna go to MIT, she jumped into the conversation and essentially disagreed with us in the sense that she was saying that quantum physics cannot be used to describe or explain spiritual events. So we were talking back and forth. It was an interesting dinner. I was thinking like, yeah, this is the, this is the kind of Christmas dinner I want. An argument about quantum physics and spirituality with my 18 year old cousin. <laughs> it, was, it, it was good. It really upset her for some reason because she takes ideas really seriously. Which you should, you know? When I was 18 I was definitely also very convinced with my own ideas and I still often are. But anyway, we, we had a conversation about quantum physics and spirituality and I'm just going to give you my viewpoint. Hers was that quantum physics cannot be used to explain spirituality. I think it can be, especially with a the new theory called biocentrism, which is a theory by Robert Lanza, which is a great, great theoretical physicist and medical doctor. And he essentially uses quantum physics to explain how the universe is alive. He d completely derails the mechanistic worldview science has held for the last centuries and says that everything is alive and that in fact you need consciousness to form matter. If there would be a universe without consciousness, that universe would only exist in a state of probability, meaning it would never actually manifest into a physical universe if there is no conscious observer in it. So that's also very debatable. A lot of people would disagree with that, but I think it is true not because I like Robert Lanzer. I do like him, but the reason I like him is because his viewpoints resonate with my personal experiences. The last couple of weeks I've spent a lot of time meditating, tuning out into the cosmos, connecting myself to higher forces that I can't rationally understand, but that can transmit wisdom and insight through vibration, which sounds like insanity, but if you use biocentrism, which is Robert Lanzer's theory, it, it can actually make rational sense as well. So, I was thinking about this and I was talking about this with my cousin. And also, I want to show you guys something really weird I've discovered. I don't quite know how it works. And I will spend some time researching it, asking people. If anybody has an idea, let me know. So I'm going to show you right now. Oh, yeah. I can't really see it, but maybe you see it better like this. Yeah, that's nice. So this is one. This is the other. And the way it did this is... I took beeswax, which you can see right here. I poured it into... No, I didn't pour it, it was hard. I put it, I placed it into a pot of hot water. Wow, look at this one. Holy shit, it looks fucking cosmic. I placed it into hot water, boiled the water, then, I can show you while I explain it so you can study it some more. Boiled the water, then when the bees wax melted, I turned off the flame, 
and I waited for it to cool down. And within, it took about five hours for it to become hard. And I think that the electromagnetic vibrations that are constantly around us, whether they come from other conscious beings, whether they come from telephone towers or our own consciousness, doesn't matter. But they do bend space and time. So as the bees wax hardens, it creates a ripple pattern that is essentially a visual representation of the resonance of certain frequencies. So, for example, if you open a window quickly and you create one big bang, that frequency will travel through the beeswax and will be forgotten relatively quickly. But if you do this every five minutes, that will create a ripple pattern in the beeswax because it's a reoccurring frequency that the beeswax then will take into consideration while it solidifies. So, I wasn't actually in the house, so there was nobody in the house creating any sound. So I don't think it was created by sound waves. Although cars driving by, but cars don't drive by in, in, in regular intervals. So I don't think that a regular ripple pattern like this was created by cars driving by. I think more that it is, has something to do with the vibration of the earth. Or some, some regular vibration that, that we can't hear or perceive that well since it resonates on a time scale of a couple of hours. So, I don't really know the science behind it, I'm still trying to figure it out. If any one of you is a scientist, or has an open mind, uh, let me know. If any one of you knows about beeswax more than I do, because I don't know much about it, hit me up. I'm still really curious about it. Anyway, this is my little Christmas talk. Infinite love.